But even in such disturbed conditions, there is acute ecstatic love for Krishna. These symptoms, however, can be divided into three groups, first class, second class, and third class. There are many disturbing symptoms in ecstatic love, such as envy, anxiety, pride, jealousy, conclusion, cowardliness, forgiveness, impatience, hankering, regret, doubtfulness, and impudence. These are included in the 33 conditions of ecstatic love. Srila Rupa Goswami has very nicely analyzed the different kinds of disturbing symptoms. And although it is very difficult to find the exact English equivalents for many Sanskrit words used here, his analysis will now be presented. When one becomes malicious upon seeing another's advancement of life, his state of mind is generally called envy. When one becomes frightened at seeing a lightning bolt in the sky, that fearfulness brings on anxiety. Therefore, fearfulness and anxiety may be taken as one. One's desire to hide his real mentality is called avahitta, or concealment, and a desire to exhibit superiority is called pride. Both of these may be classified under pretension. In a pretentious attitude, both avahitta and pride are to be found. One's inability to tolerate an offense committed by another is called amarsha, and one's inability to tolerate the opulence of another is called jealousy. Jealousy and amarsha are both caused by intolerance. One's inability to establish the correct import of a word may be called conclusiveness. I think they meant inconclusiveness. Huh? One's inability to establish the correct import of a word. You're talking about misunderstood terms. Huh? So don't anybody tell me that, that that's not in the scriptures. You will get a lecture. <laughs> <laughs> but Babaji, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> and before such a conclusive determination of import, there must be thoughtful consideration. Therefore, the act of consideration is present during the establishment of a conclusion. When one presents himself as ignorant, his attitude is called humility. And when there is absence of enthusiasm, it is called cowardice. Therefore, in humility, there is sometimes cowardice also. When the mind is steadfast, it is called enduring. And one's ability to tolerate others' offenses is also called endurance. Therefore, forgiveness and endurance can be synonymous. Anxiousness for time to pass is called impatience. And when one sees something wonderful, one is said to be struck with wonder. Impatience may be caused by being struck with wonder, and so impatience and being struck with wonder can be synonymous. When anxiety is in its dormant stage, it is called hankering. Therefore, anxiety and hankering can also be synonymous. When one becomes regretful for some offense, his feeling is called bashfulness. In this way, bashfulness and regret can be synonymous. Doubtfulness is one of the aspects of argument. After exhibiting impudence, one becomes restless. Therefore, restlessness and impudence can be synonymous. When all such symptoms are included in ecstatic love, they are called sanchari or continuously existing ecstatic symptoms. All of these symptoms are transcendental, and they are exhibited in different ways, acting and interacting under different conditions. They are like the reciprocation of love between the lover and the beloved. Now, the two very important points have been made here. One is that Although these manifestations or symptoms of ecstatic love 
are sometimes viewed as negative. Because they're in relationship with Krishna, they're transcendental. Okay? So even if there are um, not considered good qualities like pride or anxiety or you know even being devastated or uh, any of these symptoms uh, because it's in the context of love of Krishna they're actually uh, not negative at all uh, but they are uh, simply a feature of the loving exchanges the, the different flavors of relationship with Krishna And then the other thing is that these symptoms that we've been discussing uh, are part of the interchange of love between the lover and beloved. So they are more or less uh, temporary. They're always coming and going. Sanchari means temporary. Even though they're, they're always there. Sanchari, Sanchari bhavas means they're, they're always there in some form or other but they're, they're constantly changing, like the waves of the ocean. The waves of the ocean are always there. Every time you go to the ocean, you see waves. Huh? But each wave is different and unique. They're always changing. Huh? So even though the uh, Sanchari Bhavas are, are constantly changing, still the, there's always some Sanchari Bhava. There's always some Vyabhachari Bhava. So some feature, some secondary feature of the primary loving mood, uh, which are five. Uh, remember, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. These are permanent, stai bhavas. But then these other symptoms, uh, like the, what we've gone over in the last two days, uh, they're always changing. Uh, and also the ecstatic symptoms. The sattvika bhavas are always changing. But still, there's always some symptoms, some secondary symptoms present. Uh, it's very rare that there'll be like pure servitorship or pure friendship. There are always some other layer of emotions over that. Emotions are complex. Uh, a lot of times you'll have um, several emotions at the same time. And because our language is so poverty-stricken when it comes to expressing emotions. It's very difficult for us to be aware of our emotions because we don't have adequate terminology to explain them. That's why even for mundane purposes, studying the science of rasa is very valuable because it gives us a language, a, a set of terminology by which we can understand our own emotions, even in a mundane context, but especially when we're talking about love of Krishna, then this uh, terminology becomes very, very useful. Because we can understand the different changes in our relationship with Krishna, or we can understand other devotees and the changes that they're going through in their relationship with Krishna. And this brings a clarity into the whole situation. We're not just flying by the seat of our pants. We have a map. We know where we are on the map. And we can tell the difference between mundane and transcendental emotions by their object. If the object is Krishna, it's transcendental emotion. If the object is some desire or activity in the material world, then it's mundane. Very simple. So to continue. When a person is envious or defamed, there may be a change in the color of the body. This may be classified as vibhava or sub-ecstasy. Sometimes illusion, collapse, and strong anxiety are also considered to be vibhava. When there are many such symptoms, they can simply be grouped together under ecstatic love. Srila Rupa Goswami says that fright, sleep, fatigue, laziness, and the madness of intoxication are sometimes grouped under continuous symptoms of ecstatic love, and they are due to a strong attraction. False argument, determination, steadiness, remembrance, 
joyfulness, ignorance, humility, and unconsciousness are also different symptoms of ecstatic love. Dependence is also grouped under ecstatic love, and this can be divided into superior dependence and inferior dependence. The direct differentiations between superior and inferior dependence are ascertained by Srila Rupa Goswami and will, pre will be presented in due course. In other words, he's giving a system of classification. Huh? And I think one of the things we're going to have to do is go through and diagram this so that it's all clear. Maybe make a mind map, huh? Yeah. One devotee exclaimed, Oh, I cannot see the district of Matra. Even though by simply hearing the name of Matra, the hairs of my body are standing up, I cannot see the place. So of what use are my eyes?